Hey, we're back again. This week, this guy's gonna school us on maples and elms. You know it. Thank you, Michael, for inviting us over this week. Um, this week we're going to talk about uh, really the, uh, what's it, the aftercare, the care, refinement process. So, you know, you, you've caught me at a really good time, Tom. Um, I'm in the process of doing my, my second seasonal pruning on all of my elms and maples. And so I have what I did uh, earlier in the week was I took a tree that looked kind of like this and, and brought it back to it's, it's what I like to use as my normal shape for, a tree, for a trees. I prune my, uh, my elms and maples for what I consider to be, um, what, uh, winter silhouette shows. So I like to have, you know, a, a full canopy of branches. You know, I know a lot of guys like to try and prune uh, elms and maples for you know, summer shows and spring shows where they have big voids in them and show a lot of structure. Yeah. Uh, I don't grow that way. I grow, I grow for winter silhouettes. Awesome. And so it's a full canopy for me, shows off the, the fine branching really well. So I'm gonna be taking this tree and working on it next. This is a, a twin trunk uh, elm that I've had for about 25 years. I call it my anniversary tree. I got it the same year my wife and I were married. Awesome. <laughs> this is our ambassador. This is my first tree. Sweet. Okay, so. And they're approximately similar age group, 20, 25. So uh, both of these trees came from uh, the San Gabriel Nursery. Oh, they, they <clears throat> came from Bob. They're, they're not from uh, Camoras. No, Camoras is the big elm over here, um, but, um, I actually, Bob had limited amount of cork elm uh, stock. Back in the days. Back in the day. He had sold off a good, good majority of it, but he was starting to get like second growth mm -hmm. from the, the root ball that he had uh, left behind. <clears throat> and so that was where, where now he has a lot of cork elm st stock. And I've actually bought some at more from him um, to get ready for next generation but uh, these trees actually came from San Gabriel. So this is uh, not the first trimming, correct? We're in like middle of July, late July actually. Late I'll, July. Do, I'll do one more trimming after this, probably uh, way back in uh, end of September, the first part of October. Right before they go dormant? Right before they go dormant. I'll push them back one more time and any growth that comes after that's gonna be really fine twigging. That's when you build up the ramification. You get that real sweet ramification that everybody likes. So this is so you can trim most elms and maples three times, technically? I, I trim, that's the way I do it. You know, I know a lot of guys constantly pinch their maples and elms throughout the season. To me, by letting them run like this and then pushing them back, it, it helps their, keep their strength up. That's good to know. And then, uh, what's your feeding program? Because I know in Southern Cal, um, some people um, like Ryan, Ryan kind of says, you know, back off on the feeding during summertime because you're going kind of dormant, especially this heat. Um, do you do something different? So I use, uh, I'm currently using Osmocote 14. Okay. Um, 14, 14, 14 for those who don't get that. And, um, but in the past I've used Green King. And Green King I always uh, fertilized like every eight weeks. Okay. With the Osmocote I'm going 12 weeks but I'm throwing a little bit of uh, organic fertilizer in during the last you know, four weeks to kind of help the color and, and uh, strength of the tree. So 12 weeks, that's all like two and a half months-ish? Yeah, about three months, three months. Three months. Is, is basically what the Osmocote people tell you. Okay. So, that, you know, this is, you know, I pruned these one time in April Got it. After the first strong growth, and you push them back really hard, basically to two, two, two. You know, the Kinji always says, you know, it's really easy to uh, to tell, you know, how much to push back. But I take them back to just two leaves, 
and generally what you get is one at least one or two and then that helps build up your ramification awesome and, and so you're not hedging it. it looks like so for to an untrained eye someone can say michael you kind of hedged it but really you're not hedging it you're really going back to to um specifically cutting each of these um trees to a very specific point right well that coupled with the fact that if if for instance you're trying to like change the the contour of the tree uh -huh. then you might want to leave it a little bit long like three or four okay okay to, to move move direction or if you were trying to you know separate this from this area maybe you're taking in material out of here and letting it grow a little bit longer in here and a little bit longer out here that kind of thing mm -hmm. so that's that's basically how i control it awesome so we're gonna do so we're gonna go back and to the studio a couple of minutes here and we're gonna actually um, start trimming one of these trees to to a finer stage so you're going to teach us kind of the methodology that you're going to go through okay is there any difference with maples and we're talking about trident maples right not japanese maples trident right? trident maples i i pretty much treat them the same way um, depending on where they are in the in the cycle like i have a bunch of uh, trident maples against the wall the back there that i started from uh, one-year-old seedlings about six years ago okay. i've just put them uh, back, in the boxes. back into boxes and set them on the ground and I'm getting ready to do my second pruning on those. Now I'm letting the tops run on those because I've chopped them off short and I'm trying to get rid, you know, reintroduce re the taper and continue to uh, refine the root ball. But I have one over here that I basically did the same thing with. This, this trident maple is probably about 25 years old here. And it, you know, I'm, it's about ready time for me to go in and, and push back on certain areas of this. And, and so the growth is really consistent compared to other trees. This, because the, the, the root ball, the, the core of the root ball is pretty evenly formed and it's pushing pretty evenly all over. You can see that there's growth happening, you know, in the bottom easily as much as there is on the top. And that's kind of where you want to get. You want to get to so where the, the tree is functioning evenly all around. So we're talking about really refined trees at this point. Right. This is the technique for refined trees, which is some people are that stage already, which is kind of awesome to look at. So that I mean that's not true necessarily of these trees back here. They're still pushing really hard at the top. So mm -hmm. I will be able to push, push them way back at the top and that'll force the growth in the lower limbs, mm -hmm. which is kind of where you want to go this time of year start to really build up the strength on the bottom end and let that top end kind of refine over the next couple of years and then they'll be ready for pots. Awesome. All right, <coughs> so let's, uh, let's get one of these trees and let's get to the studio. All right. So, um, so this is uh, late July. We're gonna do a, some trimming on this tree. We're gonna even evenly trim it. We're going to show how you're supposed to do it, correct? Well, I'm going to show you what I do. Ah, that's really <laughs> let's spin the tree so we can have a 360 view of this tree and I want to do a zoom in really quick. Okay. Mike has this great uh, outside studio right in the shade. Went, we went from 100 degrees to what? 80? 75 <laughs> in here? Great. So for those guys who like to know how big things are, um, these, the distance from the bottom of this board to the bottom of the next board is about six and a half inches to give you an idea of scale. This is not a small tree. It may look like a really small tree, but it, the, the solution's really good. <laughs> it's a big tree, people. I'm, okay. I'm serious, this is a big tree. So this would be the front side. It needs to open up just a little bit. Um, probably do some work on the um, actual cork itself. Kind of even it out. There's some kind of funny places in it. I'm also starting to get um, some moss across the bottom side of this and so i'll be you know working that working on getting the moss off the trunk it's not a good thing awesome okay i also have another problem with this tree um, this branch here has gotten out of hand and needs to start to come down i can't pull it too hard right now because um, it's full of water <laughs> and i'll break, and i'll break it off i don't want to do that but I'll leave it sit up here for, for overnight after, uh, after I work on it a little bit and it'll start to limb, liver up. Um, it's a little bit tricky when you wanna pull down a big limb like this 
that in something that's already potted. Normally when I do that kind of work, I work on uh, when it's in a box. And it's really easy to grab a hold of it, you know, with some tubing and a wire and just screw it to the side of the box, you know. But in this case, what I'll do <clears throat> is I'll bring some wire up underneath these feet, come across, create myself a little band, and I'll be able to go in and pull down each of the branches individually. Oh, that's interesting. Do you use wire or you use like, um, like nylon rope or like... Uh... I use wire, but I also put this little, um, this, this tubing on it. Oh, so it, it, it's like, and so I just fold that over the branch like that. It doesn't cut into the And it doesn't cut in. And that, and so I can, I can, you know, put and leave it on there for, you know, up to a year without cutting in. Nice. You know, so, that's like the surgical, uh, surgical tubing, correct? Or very similar to it? Actually, this is drip, dripper system tubing. Oh, <laughs> really simple stuff. You and don't have the, to is get that the foamy stuff. You don't have, no, this is just regular PVC. Oh, it's, it's the, uh, the uh, dripper system tubing. Yeah. The, it's the quarter inch dripper system. The quarter inch, that's it. Home, yeah. Depot, Home Depot special. Yep. You get it in big 50 foot yeah. rolls and cost, you know, like 10, 15 bucks. Yeah. And it'll last. Like, I, last time I bought a roll of this stuff was probably about seven or eight years ago. I use it over and over again. You know, I it just. It doesn't deteriorate. These things last it, forever. Yeah. This is, uh, this is. Hazardous to our environment, but great for bonsai. <laughs> as long as you don't throw it in the dirt, right? Awesome. Okay. Over the over the shoulder shot, so everybody can see what Michael's doing up close. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. so here's basically what I'm trying to do here is um, I'm going to go in and take everything back to just a couple of leaves on each branch, like this. So you're really going into the tree on the, on the bottom half. So you're still leaving a, just a small section, maybe two leaves, three leaves? This tree seems to be fairly even growth all over. I, I work <clears throat> uh, directional pruning when I'm doing this. So, you know, elms basically grow in pairs, side to side, then, you know, goes this way, then this way, then this way, you know, like that kind of deal. Mm -hmm. So you look for the, the right spot to bring it off, and then you're going to, basically it's going to bud out from this leaf and come this way. So you're really knocking off any ones that are um, going up, going down, directions that you don't really want, and I'm, encouraging the ones that in the direction you want. Exactly. So this is, this is when you get, this is so much easier than wiring. <laughs> And particularly when you have, you know, a tree with this many branches, you know, wiring this is, you know, a real drag. I want to tell you, I've done it. it you know, sometimes it's necessary. Let me get a side shot of this so you guys can see what Michael's doing. So he's really aiming, he's, he's directional pruning. So uh, this is a uh, alternating branch structure. So you This is an alternating branch structure, so Michael's trimming in front of me. So on elms, they're alternating. Right. They go to left, right, left, right. So you see, they're like, goes here, then there, then here, then there. So it's really easy to pick which direction you want it to go. Or if you've got, like in this case, you've, you've lost some of it, you can bring it all the way back to like right there. And all back, but from that node right there and I'll go in that direction. Exactly. So, so you're forcing it away from the parts that you want to remain open. Um, is there a different technique you use for um, from the top versus the bottom? Because um, most trees, they're, you know, a type, atypical dominance. I mean, their, their top is more dominant than the, the bottom. Is there any... Well, you can, you can see from what the way the, the growth is on this tree, I've got pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty even. <laughs> pretty pretty good branches down here, mm -hmm. and you know pretty good branches up here. So it's you know. It's fairly even too. If you look at the length of growth from the trees, you can tell it's it's growing evenly throughout the whole structure, which is pretty impressive, Michael. So, you know, in cases like this, mm -hmm. you want to get in here and really push this back hard. You, Why is that? Well, you don't, part of, the, part of what you're after 
part of what I'm always after with, with my trees is taper. So you always kind of want to see, you know, no reverse taper. You don't want it to be larger above than below in any case. Okay. So where when you get a when you get a branch that's grown like this, and you've got a secondary branch that's right below it, if you if you yeah, yeah if you take not only are you going to get rid of this right here, but you're going to end up with something much smaller underneath. So you you know constantly you're trying to constantly try and not only flatten the growth, but take it back to stuff, you know, that's, so you get a more even branch structure all around. This is really important when you get back to um, like the next pruning, because that was gonna be the one where you're creating the, the uh, most ramification, mm -hmm. and you want that to be the finest twigging, and you want it to be uniform throughout. So people, some you people wanna hedge their trees. Hedge. I don't know what you mean by hedge. Hedge, yeah, they'll take a shear and just cut them straight. Just, you know, just make it the shape they want to, like hedging like a topiary. I understand. Um, I don't do that. It's not. Um, is, I it, is it detrimental to a refined tree to do it that way? You know, I don't know. I do know that um, it's important to t always take off the top growing branches. The ones going up? Yeah. And kind of keep it coming as flat as you can all the time. So if you were to just hedge it, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't be shortening, you wouldn't be taking off those top growing branches. So I, I guarantee you when it comes out with the next bit of growth, it's going to grow from those first and not grow from the bottom side. Oh, that's right. That would be, uh, it just, oh yeah, because of that directional energy. Yeah. So you want to, you, this is your opportunity as, as a bonsai guy to, to, you know, take care of those kinds of problems. So by just directional pruning, pulling it back, you're going to get you're going to get flat buds coming this way. Now mm -hmm. you're not going to get it. See, if I had if I were to leave this on the top right there, then that would go, and this wouldn't happen. So it's important to take those top ones back as far as you can, so that you get your growth from down here. All right. So if people are understanding the concept here, Michael will spend five, six hours on this tree? Oh, I'll, I'll spend the rest of the afternoon on this tree. Absolutely, five, six hours easily. And then, this is all hand pruning. So, you know, think about apprentices in Japan. This is what they're doing to get this really <laughs> fine ramification. It's, it's what I do, and I've had pretty good success with it. Um, but, you know, there, there may be other, other methods. I this is this has worked for me. So this is not glamour work, is it? This is this is where the this is where the really the, the rubber hits the road. This is uh, get your radio out <laughs> and enjoy a lot of quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell you, I get lost in this kind of stuff to the point where if somebody comes up behind me, it scares me every time. Oh yeah, you can, you can remember Michael lives in a really. This is a, in the first video. This is a beautiful area. You haven't seen the first video? Go watch the first video of Michael's garden. But this is an awesome area. So he can spend. Remember, he has more than one of these trees. You gotta remember this. So people, do the math here. I mean, this, this guy puts a lot of hours, and it, it shows. And Michael, your trees are awesome. It really shows during shows, especially the winter silhouette. We can see really the full structure. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I grow them. I, you know, I was so happy after I started growing trees and I started getting good silhouettes to, um, you know, I always knew that Bico Inn was around and that they did that kind of a show. And, but I can't tell everybody how unique that show is. There are very few people or clubs that show in the dead of winter just to show off winter silhouettes. And Bico Inn is one of the oldest clubs in the United States. And it's amazing to me that there aren't more clubs that show at this time of year. I think, uh, I, 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 I do remember there is one on the east on, coast. On the east coast. Right, North Carolina, South Carolina, someplace back there, they, they also, but they don't have, I don't think they still um, have the same kinds of trees for winter silhouettes that we have. 
They're heavy, heavier into uh, maples and uh, other kind of more East Coast, quiet, quieter kinds of climate. What are, what's native in there that does well in their environment, which is different? I, I'm not positive. I don't know. Oh, so Michael's going to work on this tree. Uh, I'll pop, come back maybe tomorrow, maybe a day after, see how long when he finishes, and we'll do a follow-up on this video. Um, and uh, it will not be a follow -up. actually I'll just, I'll just edit it, I'll stitch it together and then we'll talk about um, some of the aftercare of after trimming them. Thanks a lot Mike, get to work Michael, you got a couple hours. Thank you Tom. Are we starting over again? Oh yeah, so this is, uh, we're back after 10 days okay. um, from our initial video here and this is Elm, so look, let's look at this Elm, look at this guy, look how well trimmed that guy looks. So. I don't remember exactly how much growth we had on this when you saw it uh, 10 days ago, but I just, I basically pushed it all the way back to shape. So, you know, branches that were growing strong, I took them back to, you know, one or two, two uh, leaves. Anything uh, that needed to be filled in, I left it long enough to, to do the job. But this tree is, is growing pretty evenly. I don't have to do anything special with bottom or top or anything like that. I'm getting pretty even growth all the way around on this thing. So this was trimmed evenly from top to bottom? Top to bottom. N there's, no, there's no growth on the bottom longer than the top, down to two nodes for each one? Well, two or three, depending. Sometimes there's four, depending on where the branch was. But your goal is really that inner growth, trying to push that inner gro growth I'm trying to come to, back. I'm trying to get some of the ramification back. Again, um, a couple of years, several years back, I ran out of what the organic fertilizer that I always used to use um, religiously, and that that really hurt me. And so, not knowing what to use and getting my footing back really was uh, a problem. And I didn't pay as much attention to them as I should have. And then, so using is it the same as Oaks uh, Osmocote and the organic? I'm using I'm using a homemade organic because that's what I've always used. And then, uh, only it was Green King at the time. Green King, if you can ever find that stuff or they ever start carrying it in the U.S. again, it's an imp import from Japan. Uh -huh. But uh, if you can find that stuff, I highly recommend that stuff. Okay. But what I'm using currently is, you know, my version of Green King, which I have not a clue what they put in theirs, but I have a pretty good idea probably of what, what goes into a, an organic mix that they use. And then, um, and then Osmocote. The Osmocote I put on uh, for you know anywhere from three to four months, but the organic I try to put in about every uh, eight to ten weeks. So you can see the organic material on, is dark, and then the Osmocote are the little balls. Awesome. You can tell that the Osmocote working because when when uh, they start to get transparent, you can see that you know that there's less and less liquid on the inside of those. Oh, interesting. I noticed that you're wiring your trees here. So you've got some, some inner bracing, some uh, lateral bracing, and then of course you have some wiring. Your wiring is really loose. They're not tight. Oh, try not to be. I only try to um, wrap it with a little heavier wire so that I don't get a lot of uh, wire. wire marks. And it always comes off a lot easier too. You awesome. wire really tight and then you're trying to, you know, pull it back out of the bark areas. Uh -huh not so easy to do so that's one tree you have another tree right next door let's, let's back up here same deal this is probably the uh, oldest tree that I have um, oldest cork elm that I have this is my ambassador <laughs> first you know but um, same thing just same thing push it all the way back Top to bottom. I'm, I'm trying to, yes, I'm trying to do everything I can to encourage internal branching again, build up ramification. I'm cleaning it out. This some, this winter, I'll go in and clean out a lot of the, um, a lot of the stuff that isn't growing. Continue to wire and put place things in place. Awesome. You got some really healthy inner growth because I can see some of the buds pushing from the inside, from the old growth. That's awesome. And this is a normal cork elm, correct? This is cork elm. See, put your put your thumb next to the leaves. Uh, some people might not understand this concept. Uh, Look how small. Look how small. This is a regular elm, and I was like, "Well, okay, so here's here's what a leaf looks like 
um, when it's, you know, so this is new growth. Yeah. Okay, so as it, as it begins to get older and the growth, growth starts to th then diminish and you're constantly pushing it back to, so like probably this is new stuff coming off since even since I pruned it, but you can see where I pruned back to. Just those little fellows right there. Yeah, that's the smaller. That's so crazy. You always, that's one of the ways you can, it can, you can help yourself when you're pruning is you prune back to the little leaves. And see, again, it, this is a regular, you know, cork elm. I, you know, first time I thought it was a sage you, but dude, that's, this, this is crazy. You can't imagine how many leaves is on this tree. That's, that's the other, that's the other thing. You know, that's a lot of, a lot of solar panels going on. So, you know, a lot of people um, like to see trees, um, how do I want to say, with big open areas. And negative, ne big, negative, neg uh, negative, negative space, space yeah. and stuff like that. I, I, what I tell people is I grow my elms for winter appreciation. And so it, it, would, would that be a different technique if you're looking for those, you know, the, the spring and summer kind of shows? Exactly. Spring and summer, you want, you want negative space. You want to show foliage pads. You want to show ramification, you know, stuff like that. When, you, when I grow for winter appreciation, I try to give it an overall ramification. I mean, you know, obviously you keep still keep a little bit open through the front. But you want that, that, that winter but silhouette. I want that total winter silhouette, full tight damn ramification going on. And, you know, I'm pretty, I've been pretty successful with it. it. I think they look terrific, but they only look terrific for about six or eight weeks. And then they're back to growth. And this is what you get. Now I get that that isn't what a lot of people like, but it's what I like. So. Well, that's what you're, what you're focusing on on your particular show. So I think that's the, I, am. <clears throat> I think that's a specialty for people to understand with, the, with this technique that you're using. Um, have you ever defoliated your trees? No, I, not, not these. I've defoliated maples and I've defoliated liquid ambers. And it's, why not? Well, I would be at it for a week. <laughs> if that, it right? Would, <laughs> it would probably be growing back by the time I got the last of the leaves off of it. You know, it would be, it would be that, that kind of a deal. Um, but, if uh, Next step. So when would, uh, when's a great time? When's the next thing so you'll be trimming this? These, these I won't probably mess with again until mid uh, to late September. Okay. And I'll, and so the growth, the growth cycle is such that in the springtime, it pushes really hard. So starting at the end of February through March and uh, April, and then I push it back really hard and let it run out until about the first part of July. Which we're, we're in August now, but yeah, we're on the later side, but. Well, so, and then, but it's, you know, less and less strength each time. Mm -hmm. So that last pruning is when you really see all that fine ramification. And you'll probably only get maybe a node four, four lengths long, six maybe, lengths long. Maybe, you know, in some cases it might run a little, little more, but um, for the most part, yeah, it's, it, you, you're going to see some place between, you know, six and eight leaves long at okay. the most. Unlike your, the first spring push, which is like 12, 20 oh, yeah, exactly. foot, two feet long. In, the, in those cases, you're probably even uh, removing some of the branching. Because the nodes are so far apart. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. just taking it all the way back to back to the main branch and, and letting the other guys, you know, try to catch up. So that's that's been what I've done, and it seems to have worked pretty good. And this technique also works with maples, correct? Very similar. So let's look at a maple that... Um, that you have kind of ready. Let's let's turn this camera really quick. Okay. We'll so that one. this is the back side of a trident. Um, this tree has been in this pot for you know two years now, and it's it's pretty root bound. You can tell because it's not giving me it, the color's not good, although it's been being fed pretty well, watered really well. But I am getting some some run on it, so it'll get cut back. I'm thinking I might want to show this this year, so I'm going to be more careful about um, trying to get it even. So, the, so compared to the elms, they not as strong this year, just because of the root uh, root bound. I think because you can see all these trees against the wall back here. Oh yeah, they're these, just these go. are all seedlings that just got re put into boxes. 
and they just got gangbusters of and growth. They're, and you know, I've only cut them one time so far this year. They're going to get cut again because mm -hmm. I'm more interested in keeping the lower branches strong. So these runners are basically just to shield over the uh, what the, the callus the taper. Oh, the, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, once I, once I get the taper back, then I'll be a lot more careful about letting things run like this. But right now, that's what you see. But you can tell that the, you know, the stuff that's, that's got lots of, lots of good roots and is, you know, getting well fed and protected, much better green than what I'm experiencing over here. So I'm not as, I'm thinking I'm gonna need to put some organic on this material, on this and so, so what will be the next steps with this giant trident? Um, Cut it back um, probably in the next few weeks and um, then work at, with some organic fertilizer on it as well as the Osmocote. Just give, it a, give it a good healthy dose and keep it, keep it moist and see if we can't bring some color back to it. It's going to get transplanted this year. Uh, any reason why it's being worked on last compared to the elms and oaks? No, not really. No? I think... Um, they're a little more resilient, and they're, and this one in this case isn't growing as strong as the elms and oaks were. So you, so you, you have a little more time. I'm, yeah, I feel like I've got a little more time. I'm going after the stuff that's really growing. Awesome. And <coughs> next step will be exactly same, so around September, October. Yes. Do the the final the final yes. winter before it goes dormant. Yeah, and it, and it's just clean up. You know, it won't be very much. Awesome. All right, so we'll come back to this video again. Sure. Uh, it will be part two for elms and maples. Well, let's go take one. one I want to show them the difference between the uh, seju elms and the regular elms. Because I think guys that are getting started on elms need to see how fine um, the, the branching yeah. and the leaves can be. It looked very similar, but it's just a micro scale. It's almost like a fourth of the size. Yeah, and and so, you know, these these can be very rewarding to you know guys when they're first getting started. They're a lot of fun because it's almost like as long as you keep them well fed and moist, these trees grow like weeds. <laughs> I have one. I killed mine by accident. I think it's uh, during the move. I think it's just lack of water. I posted some photos online of a before and after when mm -hmm. I cut this one right at the 1st of uh, July. And I can tell you that the growth on it was like this. Wow. And that was like the second pruning, okay? <laughs> and it's been in this box. This is, uh, I think, the third year it's been in this box. Uh -huh. It's going to get transplanted this winter or this in February, this early spring. But, um, you know, it's... These things are fun. <laughs> I mean, they're, just, they're almost like thoroughbreds. You can't, you can't cut them hard enough. Oh, they come back, huh? Yeah, That's they awesome. do. I mean, this, like, what, it's been maybe four weeks, and it's already got all kinds of new growth all over it. Awesome. It's just going nuts. All right, so we'll be back in about two months, two, three months period of time. Ten weeks, something like in there. And then we'll come and look at the, the elms again and see how they're growing Perfect. and the maples. Um, yep. So again, if you uh, like the like like subscribe, leave a leave a comment for Mike, and we'll get back to you. Thank you guys. Thank you.